In this video, I'm going to go over how to make a simple triptych in Photoshop. So you can see I already have it made up here in Photoshop, although I haven't separated out the panels. Basically, it's one image split into three or more panels. You can do a two and it'd be a diptych. You can do three as a triptych. You can do four. You can do as many as you want. I've laid this out as a 20 by 30 here, a 20 by 40 in the middle, and then a 20 by 30 on the other end. Could be any size you want. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. And the size I'm going to make the document is going to be the size is going to be the size that's larger than the overall dimensions of the whole piece. So I'm going to do 68 by 40. The resolution I'm going to do is 150, and we'll do that. So I made this bigger, sort of you can sort of simulate it what it's going to look like on the wall. Now I'm going to draw out some guides for where I really want it to start. I'm going to do a new guide at three inches, and then I'm going to do another new guide at the end it's going to be three inches in it's going to be at 65 inches so in between the three panels i'm going to have an inch of space so i've I'd made the overall document 68 inches wide i've got three inches on the right and three inches on the left so 68 minus 6 is 62 and each of my panels is 20 inches wide that leaves me with the spare one inch that's going to go in between each panel so to make the panels I'm going to use the rectangular marquee, and instead of being a normal mode, I'm going to change it to a fixed size, and that'll give you a width and a height that you can enter in. And you can see I've already got 20 inches wide, height is 30 inches. And then I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm just going to go ahead and click anywhere. And then I'm going to fill this with my foreground color, which I have is red, so that's Alt and Backspace. And let's see, I'm on that layer. I'm going to press Control D to deselect it. I'm going to press Control J. That's going to duplicate the layer since I need two of these. So now I've got two of them and I've got two different layers. I'm going to make another layer and now I'm going to make the third panel, which is a little bit larger. It's 40 inches tall. And I'm just going to click anywhere. It took up the whole height because the canvas I made was only 44, was only 40 inches tall. And the example I have over here, I added a little bit to it so you could sort of see above and below it. And I'm also going to fill this with the foreground color, Alt-Backspace. And I'm going to deselect Control D and go back to the Move tool. So you can see we're getting there. You can see where we're going on this. Now what we're going to do is that I have Snap turned on. And what I'm going to do is take this left panel, which isn't near the guide and I'm going to snap it to it. So to select it automatically and press control and then click on it and you can see over here it automatically selected that layer and now I'm just going to move it until it snaps to it. You can see it sort of grabbed the edge. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. Control click on the layer, move it away. Boom, there it snapped onto the guide. So they're totally uneven but I have my three panels. Now I'm going to select all three of them. Again with the move tool and then you've got some options up here. First thing we're going to do is align the center. So now they're all aligned this way. And then this one over here is pretty cool. Distribute horizontal centers. It's going to take this, the left and the right one and then distribute the space in between them evenly. And there you go. Now you can see I have an inch of space there, an inch of space there. And I'm three inches from each side. So it all adds up to the 68 inches that I had. While I have all three of them selected, I'm going to go ahead and press Control G to group them, and now that's going to become my clipping mask. I'm going to go ahead and we'll call this Clip Me. And now I just need to bring my image in and then clip it to the mask that I made. So to do that, I'm going to go out into Bridge, and I've got this image here. I'm going to right click on it and do Place in Photoshop. And it opens up in Camera Raw because I have that set as preferences. This is a pretty small image. You'd want to do this with a larger image, but that's just what I have to play with. So it'll work fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and make it much bigger than the panels. And now you'll see over here, I want to clip it to the group that has the panels in it. So I'm going to press Alt, and you can see the mouse just changed. Changed from a hand to the little lower, the arrow going down. And as soon as I do that, it's clipped it to the shapes that are in the group below. And now with the Move tool, I can move it however I want. You can see when I move it outside the panels, it turns red because that's the color of the panel. And we'll say something that like that looks pretty good. So now we've done most of the work. We have the panels, but they're all in one sheet. I guess if you wanted to print a 40-inch wide print by 68 inches, you could do that and then cut it down, but that's no fun. 
We're gonna go over here and we're gonna flatten this. If you really like this, you'd save it as a PSD first and then do this. Flatten, and then we're gonna go over here to File, Automate, Crop and Straighten Photos. And now Photoshop is gonna find the three different images and put them as their own separate images. Uh-oh. And I think it saw that sharp line there and didn't like it, so... We're gonna get rid of that one. Maybe we'll add some white space just to make it a little bit more obvious where the images are. And we'll go back and do that again. Okay. There you go. So now you have three separate images, and if you go and check the image size, they should be the size that we asked for, 20.007 by 40. That's close enough. They're not going to be completely exact when you do the crop and straighten, but they're pretty darn close. So from here, you'd be, you could do a little bit of cleanup to get them exactly what you want, but I think that fraction of a inch is just going to be the way the pixels are. And there you go. So each one of those files you can now print individually as two 20 by 30s and a 20 by 40. And you'll end up with this roughly, although this is the first one. So I might have moved it around a little bit differently. And that's it.